Hey everybody, this is going to be a beginner's tutorial. Ah, there I said a tutorial. I usually say video, but I suppose it is a tutorial of, of sorts. Um, but it's going to be a beginner's tutorial for making a very simple gun. Now that's not to say it's not going to look cool and it's not going to be a lot of fun. Um, but the idea for this particular video is to do something um, using primitive objects in Blender, all right, cubes and cylinders, things like that, and to do relatively minor manipulations of them so that people that are just, you know, sort of starting out with Blender can still make something cool like this gun here um, and have some fun, learn some really important techniques that'll you know bring you to places where you can create models that are much more complicated than this and much more complicated than things that I could do all right um, I'm not a blender uh, expert by any means as I've made clear in all my other videos um, but this one in particular I wanted to do um, really simply and to try and explain what I'm doing so that you know, if you are just starting out, and if you're not, there's plenty of advanced Blender videos out there, and there's plenty of videos for beginners as well. Um, but this one I'm going to try my best to explain what I'm doing and show you what I'm doing, and I'm going to provide this diagram. This is not the best gun in the world, but it's what we're going to use, and you could download this image and you can follow along with me uh, learning the basic techniques if you don't already know them if you already know them and you want to move on to something more complicated I've got a few other videos on my webs on my channel here website channel whatever and there's lots of other blender stuff out there as you know all right so um, this is an image that I've drawn I tend to do my drawing in flash and so the the image itself may is not perfect all right some of the angles um, and and stuff isn't always perfectly lined up but we're gonna do our best to use this in blender as a background image and we're gonna model against it all right so don't expect the most incredible um, smooth and shiny sci-fi gun this is going to be a low poly and I'll explain what I mean by that soon a low poly basic model to get people going in blender and beyond that go nuts all right so this is blender all right now admittedly I have an older version of blender I'm a little afraid to upgrade to tell you the truth all the fancy new tools I really enjoy doing stuff very basically with a minimum of um, helper functions so for example there are um, I don't know plugins or add-ons that will let you make a window just like that and I don't want to do that I want to make my own window or make a bolt I want to make my own bolt even if it's not very good I'd rather do that now I know people that work in the graphics industry would say do things to save you time and energy and that makes a lot of sense I don't work in the graphics industry I'm doing this for fun I want to learn how to do it and I want to make my own stuff all right and that's why my videos on my channel and my models are not that great but they're mine the stuff that I made all right and I enjoy doing that and I hope you do too I don't want to just grab a sofa from some you know modeling site and put it into a, a box that I made I want to make the sofa even if my sofa is not very good it's my sofa does that make sense well anyways I've been talking too long so this is what you're going to get when you open blender all right you can use your middle mouse to pan around like this scroll around and use the mouse button to zoom in and zoom out and um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to come up here to Blender Renderer and I'm going to switch over to Cycles Render. Now, don't get scared. We're not going to be using any complicated uh, nodes for materials or anything like that. But I'm going to switch to that because then I can come over here under the camera here and I can switch from device to GPU compute and, um, to allow my uh, video card to use some of its built-in power. I'm not really going to need that because this is going to be a very low poly model. So what am I talking about? Well, first of all, let's click on the camera and delete it. Now I am left clicking on these things and then hitting X to delete. 
I have switched my mouse in file user preferences and I don't know I guess you can look up mouse and see how to do it so that it's a left click to select and right click will do other things you may have that differently you may be right clicking so if I sometimes say to left click on something you may have to right click and, and right away that's frustrating so uh, if you want to switch that just just you know Google how to do that and you'll be set but anyways I'm just moving around with my middle mouse button if I hold the shift button and the middle mouse button I can actually move things like this let's say the cubes over there you know I can move it into the center another thing you can do is you can hit the period key and that will zoom you right in and sort of center the object now I'm using the middle mouse uh, button again one thing I often like to do though is to get rid of the grid floor. I don't really necessarily need to see that. I want to see my axes, this green one for Y and this red one for, uh, for X and I don't know if the blue one's going to show up or not. Anyways, in order to get to that setting to get rid of the grid display, I'm going to hit N on my keyboard. N is going to bring up this side panel and it's going to close it. T will get rid of that. Or bring it back and by the way my screencast keys are on so you can see what buttons I'm pressing on my keyboard so I'm gonna hit N and I'm gonna search around in here you can open and close these little arrows okay and I'm gonna come up to display what's going to be displayed here and down here says grid floor I'm gonna click it off all right so then I'm gonna hit N to close that so the grid floor is off makes it a little easier uh, to use um, let's assume at least for this video that you know how to navigate all right in in blenders how to turn things around how to zoom in and how to select by the way to deselect you just hit a so a will select everything on stage okay and a again will deselect but if you happen to have say I'm gonna just duplicate this and not talk about how I did that but if you had two there and I just want one of them if I hit a I'm gonna get both of them selected if I want one I've got to select that individual one I can hit a to deselect from either all or one of them anyhow I really um, don't need any of these cubes so I'm just gonna delete them all so I have nothing in my scene right now except for my axes and this circle right here this is called the 3d cursor and if it's ever somewhere off and and you know I did that a lot when I started blender all of a sudden I was clicking and all of a sudden it's out there we'll see the importance of that thing in a minute but if you want to bring it right back to the origin of the stage or the screen you go shift s notice the commands are down here that I'm hitting right shift s and go cursor that's that 3d thing is called a cursor to center and it'll go right back to the center I'm gonna leave it there for the moment we're also going to be modeling from the side view now you can hit the various numbers on your number pad you just look up here it says front I hit number one it said front number three is right number six nothing number four nothing number five well that's an important one so what we really own seven is also important the top and by the way if you're looking down on something from the top and there's nothing to look at if you want to look instead of looking down you want to look up from the bottom you just do control and seven and that says bottom so for example if I'm on right if I go con that's three if I go control three I'm now on the left side okay so I tend to use the the, the numbers although you can get to the, the views uh, in other ways all right left right back front bottom that kind of thing all right well we're going to do this from the right now there's nothing there right now but we're going to be looking on the side well there's nothing to look at so let's bring in that background image of the gun and then we'll start doing some modeling the way we bring in a background image is from n which will open the side panel and down near the bottom it says background images i'm going to open up this arrow and i'm going to click add image now you of course want to have downloaded this image and saved it somewhere I'm going to come down to where it says open and then I need to navigate to where that is now uh, if you're depending on how your panels are you might be able to pull this down and have some recent directories all right I do have a recent directory here that I could look in and it's called gun no color now when I upload this to my server after I do this video um, it may be it probably will be gun underscore no color dot jpeg but in lowercase letters or it might even have a different name so whatever the name is for the image and by the way you can click this button here with these sort of 
rectangles to, to view them. All right, so I want this one here, and that'll probably be all I give you. Okay, so, so there it is. Now, I can scroll in with my middle mouse button, but the problem is that my 3D cursor is right here. This is the middle, and my image is a little off-center. I want to move the image, not the 3D cursor, so that the 3D cursor is kind of right there, and the middle of the image is right there. So what you do is you scroll down, and I hope you're going to be able to see this. I have to move my picture out of the way so you won't be looking at me. These two ones here, okay, um, will adjust um, the position. So I'm going to use this one, and you can see if I pull this, it starts to move left and right. All right, so I want to pull this so it's pretty close to there. I'm going to adjust a, a bit, and this one will move it up and down. And I'm going to move this. That's about the middle of the gun. It's not going to be perfect, all right? It doesn't have to be perfect. But I want this right in the middle of the spaces there. So I'm going to go 0 0.78. Let's try that. All right. That's pretty close to right in the middle. So by adjusting these numbers here, I've positioned the image, uh, the background image, where I want it. Now, this is not the middle of the page, right? Looks like I've got about two thirds of the page here and one third, but it's about the middle of the gun. All right. The other thing is I'm viewing it from the right. If I view it, say, from the top, if I hit seven to look straight down, I see the image again. But that's weird. I mean, I should be looking at the top of the gun instead of the side, but I only have a side view. I only want to be able to view this image from one view, the right side. So I'm going to go back to three. There it is where it's all centered. I'm going to come up to right here, the axis where it says all views. I'm going to click on that and choose only right. And I'm also going to minimize this. I'll minimize that. We're done with this. I'm going to hit end to close that. So I'm looking at the side view of the gun from the right. If I choose, say, 7 to look top down, I don't see the image anymore. Or if I go Control 7, I don't see it. If I go 1, I don't see it from the front. But 3, I see it. I only need to see it from the right. Now, it's a little fuzzy right there. And I don't know what the resolution will be like uh, when you watch this video. But if I come up closer, at some point, it gets sharp. All right? But we can zoom in quite a bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly sharp either. But we're going to model on top of this. All right? All right. Now, get a sip of coffee here. Like I said, we're going to be using primitive objects. Well, you will always pretty much start with a primitive object. Usually, you might start with a single vertex and extrude and do stuff like that. We're not going to do that. We're going to start with an object and then we're going to start shaping it. We're also going to be reusing objects quite a bit and we'll find that that's helpful or at least somewhat anyhow. Now because this is a side view you can't exactly tell what object to use. You might say well it looks a little bit like a square with the corners cut. All right. Actually, the object that I want to use to start with is going to be a cylinder, but it's not going to be a perfectly round cylinder. Instead, it's going to be a cylinder with eight sides, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's get started with the modeling, assuming that you've got your background image in there and you're all set and ready to go. And if you didn't switch to Cycles Render, it doesn't matter. All right, it's not going to matter. Some of my panels later on when I do a couple of very basic materials may look a little different, but you could probably figure that out. They're similar enough. Anyways, that's right at the end. So let's let's do the modeling of this gun. All right. So we're going to bring in our first primitive object and we're going to model this part right here. So I'm going to use the shortcut keys to to do this and I'll tell you what they are. You can watch down here my screencast keys. I'm going to go shift A. So write some of these down if you don't know them, all right, because you're going to be using this quite a bit. Shift A brings up the Add menu where you can add various, you know, cameras and lights. But we want mesh, okay? We're going to start modeling, and we're going to choose Cylinder, all right? So if I move away and I click away, I haven't done anything. Once again, Shift A, notice it says that down there. Shift A, Mesh, and I'm going to choose Cylinder. But wait, 
don't click anything else yet all right over here on the side and it might be collapsed your little menu it says add cylinder this is still selected and this is the first operation I've done I haven't clicked away I haven't done anything because once you do that it's kind of stamped in and you will lose this menu no problem if that's the case you lose the menu ah, see it's gone I deselected it's gone well just delete it and add it again mesh cylinder under here add cylinder I want to change just the vertices nothing else to 8 done hit enter and it's done doesn't matter anymore now this is laying um, it facing upwards I want to turn this on its side all right so the axes are it is um, really something that you have to get used to unless you've done some 3d work before I struggled a lot with with it you use your your arrows to tell you this is the y-axis and this is the, the Z or Z axis the x-axis is coming straight out at us or going away from us let, let me turn this a little bit you see there's the X coming right out at us and there's the Y and there's the Z I want to rotate this um, around so it's sort of this part is facing along the y-axis so often I'll, I'll actually go with my mouse oh don't do that uh, okay I gotta turn this way or I'll do it with my hand or something like that if I can't do it in my head right away but what we want to do is sort of like tumble around the x-axis so let's try this we're gonna rotate this object and in order to rotate it you need to make sure it's selected right so in this theme that I'm using and by the way you can switch themes by going user preferences and over here I've got uh, I think a science lab on you might have you know if you had something else you know it'll look like that all right so I don't particularly like that one so I uh, my favorite one that I just find the most useful is this science lab one that may or may not be available if you've got an older or a newer version of blender anyways make sure the object is selected and you'll see some form of line around it suggesting it is and we're gonna rotate this around the X 90 degrees right just to go flat down so around the X 90 degrees the way you say rotate around the X 90 degrees is you type R for rotate X for the axis and then the number 90 and then click um, I click my left mouse button to uh, accept that or finalize it the object is still selected and it's laying sideways if I hit 3 now I can see that I've rotated this that way all right I'm now going to use the green arrow I'm going to push it back here and it's pretty well lined up it's not the right length but the problem is there's this sharp part right at the top and I don't want that so I also want to rotate this so that it's flat on top flat on the bottom and flat on the sides and then I've got these sort of angles so I want to rotate this around the y-axis all right, I want to spin it around. I want this sharp angle to be over here a little bit. So this flat part is right on top. So I am going to rotate. I'm going to go R Y this time, 22.5. And that's going to put it, let, let me look from another angle, one, the front, straight on, and it's flat on top. It's starting to look a little bit like a spaceship. All right, so that's what I wanted. Now, um, this is supposed to be a gun, not the corridor of a spaceship. And so we need to do some more work on this primitive object, this eight-sided cylinder, all right? So we're gonna edit this. We're gonna edit this more than just rotating it. And another thing I should mention, I'm just using my middle mouse button to move it around, all right? You'll notice I'm not seeing my background image, right? That's because I'm in a view. I'm just, it says user right now because I'm just moving around. I'm not in any of the predefined views, right? I'm gonna come back over to the right there. My diagram is back, okay? And as soon as I move out of the right view, the direct straight on right view, I don't see the diagram, which is helpful, so it's not distracting to model. Um, we're going to edit this because right now we are in what's called, if you look down here, object mode. And we can do some forms of modifications. We can rotate and we can scale and scale this and that kind of thing. 
But if you really want to get into to modeling this, you have to go into edit mode. Now I want to show you something. If I come over here to flash, right? This is this, the gun model, all right? Um, if you know anything about flash, uh, you'll recognize symbols. This is the, a symbol, all right, in flash. I can't move these lines or do anything, all right? I, I, all I can do is move the whole thing. If I want to edit this, I have to go in to the symbol. Now look up here, right? Scene one, double click. I go into the symbol and now I've got more symbols. I still can't do anything to this. If I want to do anything, I gotta go into the symbol. Now I could move that line or something, I can edit it. So it's similar in Blender in that if you want to do anything sort of deeply other than rotating and scaling it, you've got to go into this like a symbol. And the way you do that is switching from object mode to edit mode. And it will change in its color and you will see things you didn't see before. All right, object mode and edit mode. So I'm back in object mode, sort of at the root level versus going into it, which is edit mode. Now, I tend to use a shortcut key, which is the tab button. I press it on my keyboard, see it says tab. And that brings up this floating menu here and this little thing points in the direction of what I'm about to choose. This is some form of pie menu, and if you don't have it activated, you could go up into File, File, User Preferences, and I think it's Add-ons. If you search for pie, see, use pie menus official. You click that, and you save, um, and then you, you should have it. Uh, let me just go back to Object Mode for now. All right, so I will probably very, very often be hitting Tab, and then choosing Edit Mode tab and choosing object mode back and forth but you could do that down here all right so we're going to edit this um, there is something else that you should know before we go too far and this is going to be frustrating for beginners um, but you need to know um, I rotated this while it was in object mode just like in flash there's a symbol I can rotate this and it's fine <laughs> um, I haven't uh, rotated the individual symbols I rotated the whole thing I didn't make any major changes to that um, you can do that in blender I can rotate this as you've seen you can also change the scale so for example let's look at this notice it's a little short okay well let's let's make some changes let's first of all by the way bring this up there a little bit I just moved it all right in the y direction I want this longer because my origin of this object is right in the middle if I scale this in the y it doesn't know to just scale out this way just because the arrows pointing that way or this way it's gonna scale in both ways if I don't tell it differently so watch this I'm gonna scale this in other words change its size all right change its scale the way you change the size or scale of something is you press S, S for scale, and then the axis along you, which you want it to make it bigger or smaller. I want it along the Y, so if I go S, Y, then I just pull my mouse. Out makes it bigger, in makes it smaller. I want to come out to there. Now you'll say, well, what about those things there? Well, we're going to deal with that later. And the fact that you can't see the diagram underneath that. Well, we're going to deal with that in a bit too. But I want to show you something. I'm going to hit N and I'm going to come up here to scale. All right. I've scaled it, right? It says X is 1, Y is 1. We just scaled it. Z is like 1.193. What's going on? Um, I can't really explain or I don't really know why exactly. But when you scale an object in object mode instead of edit mode, it does strange things to the object and you need to reinitialize it to continue to work properly. Sometimes you can get away with not doing it. Um, it's a way of leveling things out, getting back to basics, resetting it and then continuing. That won't make much sense, but watch this. I'm with the scale right there. I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna come down to uh, object. So in object mode, apply, 
And because I rotated it and I scaled it, I'm going to click this button, Object, Apply, Rotation and Scale, and watch the scale numbers there. <clears throat> See the way they all went back to one? This thing has been reinitialized. Now watch this. Let's go into edit mode. I know it changes for that. Um, don't worry about any of these colors or anything like that. I'm going to scale this though while I'm in edit mode. All right. I'm going to do the same thing. S Y. I'm going to make it shorter. All right. Let's go back to object mode and look. Those numbers didn't change. Let's do it here. Okay. Scale in the Y. Right back out to there. Look, the numbers changed. So. I want to I want to get those numbers back to one. I want everything zeroed out. Oh, but it's one. <laughs> it's not quite zero. Object apply rotation and scale. Well, all I did there was just scale. I didn't rotate it. So all right, fine. Scale back to back to there. There is a shortcut key. Control A will bring up that same menu. That stuff there. Okay. Control A. So I'll probably do that quite a lot. Scale. It doesn't matter if I do it again and again and again and again. It's done. All right. So if you forget, you go, did I just do it? Do it anyhow. All right. So that's when you manipulate um, objects in object mode, like scaling, you want to reset this and then everything will work better. All right. Anyways, end to close that. So that's what we have so far. Okay. Side view. Now let's start editing this go into edit mode okay I'm using my pie menu but you can do it down here object edit mode and I'm gonna hit one on the side there to uh, on my numpad to, to look from the front or the back it doesn't really matter whatever I'm just looking end on and one of the things I want to mention is that this gun is not gonna be perfectly circular like a like a space corridor all right, or maybe the muzzle part would look good like that, and it will. We'll do stuff like that. But I want this to be flatter, sort of on the sides, you know, and squished in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it on the X narrower. The problem is, let me hit three again. I only have a side view. I don't know how narrow to make this. So I'm going to use my, you know, my gut feeling about it. So I'm going to look from the side. And I'll deselect for a second. Um, I'm in edit mode. And by the way, you can see these dots here. And depending on what mode you are in here, uh, what selection mode, you can see the dots, you could see lines, or you could see polygons. Let, let me do it from the side. Dots, just lines, polygons. We'll talk about all those later on. It doesn't matter what you are looking on in this particular thing that we're going to do. We're going to look number one from the end. We're going to select it by pressing A. We're going to select it all and I'm going to squish it in. So I'm going to go SX and I'm going to bring my mouse in to make it smaller. SX in like that. And you can see what that's starting to do. So just get a shape that you think might be nice. Okay, that might be okay for a gun. All right, all right, that's one thing. You can come back into object mode, have a look and go, yeah, okay. So you'll notice it didn't change anything here. And don't worry if your line isn't perfectly lined up. There's gonna be all kinds of, I can move it a little bit, but I mean, there's gonna be all kinds of inconsistencies with the diagram. We're just roughly following this, okay? But that's not all that I want to do. These lines here, let me, turn to perspective view a little bit. I would like them higher up so there's more of a flat side. I think it would look better that way. And so this is what we're going to do. But once again, I'm not sure how well we can follow the book. Let me see. Or the, the, the diagram. Oh, I just did something that I never said anything about. I'm in object mode. All right. But you can look sort of like with x-ray vision with wireframe down here and you can see through it so if I want to do that I can see through my object all right and this is very helpful for editing we'll be doing this quite a lot but I want to be in edit mode while I do this and that'll change the color it looks a little bit in my case grayish 
while I do this. Well, that's fine. See these lines up here on the diagram? I would like these lines to line up roughly with these lines, but these lines go through, or go at least on that side and that side. There's a couple of them, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both sides. In other words, here, let me, let me go to this, the lines. This line and that line, this line and that line, and I'm going to move their position, all right? In order to do that well, I'm going to go into side view number three, and I like to do this in vertex selection. So I'm using control tab to switch to this little dialog box, which is the same as this stuff. There's edge edge mode or edge selection mode, vertex. Let's say I'm in edge and I want vertex. Instead of clicking down here, I'd rather just I'd rather just go control tab and click it. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to select this, and a good way to select everything is to box select, draw a box around it, all right? Hit B, and you get that cross with the dots. Press your left mouse button to create a rectangle of any size, and do that. I want to get, and what I've done is I've selected all of this line with the dots, the vertices is what they are, and that one, and this one, and this one. But I want to try something else. Yeah, it's going to amount to the same thing. You can press B a number of times and add to your selection. Let's go back to one for a second, and I want to show you. I want to move this line up, okay, that line, and this one upwards and these ones downwards but I don't want to do the top a certain amount and then the bottom and see if they're similar I'm gonna move them equally and in order to move them equally I've selected this one and this one this one and this one and I'm going to go scale in the Z direction and I'm gonna pull out see the way they're going equally let's look at that again I want to move them in the Z direction up and down so I select the top ones and the bottom ones, and I get a good vantage point. Now I could do this from the side, all right? Whenever you have two things that are sort of opposite, oppositely selected, and you scale, they will go like this or like this. I can move them together. I can go scale Z and put my mouse in or out. And if I do it from the side and I keep pulling to there, let's say, they're a little off on the diagram because my diagram's a little off. If we look from the end, we will get this. I'm going to hit A to deselect. This is looking a little bit more like a gun. Now I'm going to go Z. To, um, I'll go out of wireframe. I'll do it here. Back to solid. Okay. Or I could do Z wireframe. Z brings up the pie chart. Choose solid. I'm going to go back to object mode. That looks a little bit more like a gun part to me. Hit three. We're still in there. We haven't changed the shape. We just changed some internal lines. And that's what I like better. All right. All right. Now, let's actually edit this a little bit more in wireframe. Let's go into edit mode, Z and wireframe. And now we can look. Now, if you wanted, you could select the whole thing. I just did A to select the whole thing, and you could go scale in the Z, and you could pull the whole thing, and it'll get bigger or smaller. If you want it to go out to the line, just like that, and that would be fine. If this edge wasn't quite far enough, and you wanted to, to edit it, remember, you want to move all of this stuff. I don't want to just move that point like that. All right, deselect that. What you do is from the side, box select like this. If I do that, I will get all of those points selected and I can move the whole thing. If I do this, let's go out of wireframe, solid view. All right, I can't see through it. Solid view from the side, I'll do the same thing. Box select that. So I hit B, draw a rectangle till it encompasses it all, let go. Look what it's done. It's only selected the parts in view. 
this one's in view, that one, that one, that one. The other ones are in behind. So this is why I use wireframe. Plus I can see through it. So if I use wireframe and go B, and then I pull this arrow, I can move this out to line up with the diagram a bit better. But you know what? It's not going to matter that much because what I'm about to do is going to be a little off the diagram. All right. We need to make these curves, these edges here. And I know you probably don't know how it's going to affect the model. I mean, it looks like it's just, you know, cutting a square, but it's, it's a little different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go B and box select that point there. And that's really going to get that point, those two points right there Oop, from the side. And I want the bottom one. So it's going to be that. And I'm going to get this one. And I'm going to get these, this one. Because those are the four corners affected. But you know what? I don't think I only want those. Let's, let's try it and I'll show you what I mean. I need to cut this. Well, you could cut it with a knife. There is a knife tool in here. Knife. But that would not be very accurate. Instead, what we're going to do is something called beveling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go control B and I'm going to pull away from the center like that. And that will do a similar kind of thing. It'll split it. And that'll do this. But that's not exactly what I want. So let me back out of that and I'll show you what we do want to do. And you say, how would I know to do it? You will. You will in time. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to B box select that and this all right which gets that actually you know what i think it might be easier to do this not in object mode in solid view i'm going to do something different i'm switching to edge selection and i'm going to shift and alt press shift and alt and click that edge if i just press shift i get one edge i want to go all the way around this will give us a better effect watch this okay i just clicked all the way around I'm also going to shift alt and click there. I get the whole thing. If I didn't want to do it that way, I could shift and click and make sure I get all of these edges. Okay, now watch this. I've selected the edge that went around the whole thing. All right. I'm going to go control B, control B. Notice my cursor. Let me do that again now has a dotted line that dotted line leads to the origin of the object so if I move the arrow up there things start to happen what you do is you start to pull your mouse away and this will start happening okay you're cutting it like that this is the effect that I want but I want to be able to see what I'm doing so I'm gonna go into wireframe while those are selected and I'm gonna go control B and that's going to pull it like this. And I'm going to, I just uh, left click to finish that. I'm going to do it until I see that angle, that angle, that angle are close. I got this part in addition to just the tops that I had before. And this is a better effect because watch this. Hit A to deselect, Z to go back into solid, and tab, go back to object mode. And this is the effect that we've gotten, all right? It's very low poly, and you can look at how many vertices or faces you've got um, up there. Um, it's not smooth. That's not how this model is going to look. It's going to be very blocky because already this is a little complicated, right? We're not ready to get super smooth things and worry about um, uh, stuff like that, all right? That's not what we're going for right now. We want to learn the tools and when to use them. So back to three, back to the side, we've made this piece. Now we're gonna be doing this again. Uh, we really should do it again. Um, uh, so um, here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna do this piece because it's very similar. So we might as well copy this piece, all right? So let's do that. Let's copy this piece and bring it over and see if we need to make any changes. It's selected, so to copy, I'm gonna go Shift D. Okay, and click duplicate it's there but it's right on top of the other one so I'm gonna pull it over with the arrow to there but I can't see anything so let's go ahead into wireframe 
and I'm just holding the, sh the shift button and my middle mouse button to pan the image or the, or the stage over and I look and I go wow this is way too big now I want you to see something I don't want to give you too much information at the beginning but watch these angles and the space here as I scale to make it smaller watch the distance here and that angle scale in the Y I'm gonna make it come closer do you see how this got much smaller than than it was let me let me undo and just watch this space it's that's not gonna look good at all if I just copy this see right now the space and the angle here is the same and if I want some consistency in my model even if I put this right in the middle and I go well I'm gonna scale equally on both sides well let's watch it scale in the Y I'm pulled into about where I need it that's not gonna look good and so I'm gonna show you a different way to scale all right I'm in wireframe mode right now you can see that down here I'm gonna go into edit though with wireframe on I'm gonna do something different even if I scaled in edit mode I'm just gonna select it all. I'm gonna go scale in the Y ah, it still did the same thing didn't it so we're not gonna do that instead we're gonna pull this whole section into where we need it without affecting the curve and the space I'm gonna show you how to do that go down to vertex mode box select this end I could do both of them at the same time but I don't need to do that now that I've selected all of this I can move it without changing the the spacing and the angle I'm gonna put it there all right I'm gonna box select this side and I'm gonna pull it in to there now this is also too big all right so I think what I'm going to do is instead of scaling in the Z and doing that if I do that my lines here are off so I, I'm gonna try just to box this part and by the way it looks like I'm only grabbing four points remember I'm getting the back points as well let's try pulling them down all right now I guess this is a different distance here than here but this is a smaller piece it's it's probably supposed to it'll look better having this is a different distance but this line at the same height as this one okay box select these bottom ones bring them in is that good enough with respect to the diagram that's fine let's get out a wireframe let's go back to solid into object mode and let's have a look at our work that's what we have so far okay let's not forget to save make sure you've saved your model all right side view again well we can use this piece for the middle now I know it's hard to tell what's in there so you're just gonna have to trust me that I want to use this and scale it down shift D to duplicate it bring it right into the middle there let's go into edit mode and wireframe and have a look okay in this case I am just going to go S Oh, select it all scale and I'm gonna bring it down like this and this piece is gonna connect into this one like a cylinder and this one into this one so I really am I'm not gonna need these end parts here in fact um, so what I'm saying is I'm gonna bring all of this into this one it's gonna jut into this one and this one into that one and so I'm not gonna need all these parts you're not gonna see them so I'll show you what I mean I'm gonna go into wireframe I'm gonna go like this I'm gonna box select all of this and I'm gonna pull it into there all right it's hidden inside see like that ah but this looks a little bit too wide all right well let's undo that all right and let's actually delete these parts I'm gonna do vertices. No, I'm not gonna do vertices. I'm gonna go 
faces. If that ever happens to you and you lose too much, try another thing like faces. I'm going to get rid of those. And let's try a different selection. Let's click on face, click that face, and shift and click that one and that one and this one. And oh, you got to go and wait, there's an easier way. Shift and or click that one, shift and alt, and click on this line or this line or this line. If you click the polygon itself, sometimes you'll select the wrong stuff. I want to select all these polys and I don't want to go around like this. All right, so I'm going to go shift alt and click and shift and click that one. I also want that one. X, delete faces. All right, I got rid of all those. Fine, great. Let's look at side view, hit A. I don't need to be in wireframe because I just want to pull this side out to there, this side out to there. So I'm going to go scale it in the Y both directions. So I'm going to go S, Y and pull my mouse away until it's inside. That's good enough. Let's go have a look at that. It's inside, but I don't like I like this spacing here, but I don't like this, not enough space. So we're going to scale this in the X, right? We're going to squeeze it in. And I'd like to squeeze it in a similar amount as this space here. So let's try that. With this whole object selected, I'm going to go S, X, and I'm going to just pull my mouse in. And I'm looking for a similar spacing. It doesn't have to be exact. How's that? And I'm just moving around to look at it in different positions. Now, by the way, and scale all weird right how about control a scale back to zero all right because we did some manipulations in object mode and to close that side panel how's it looking a little bit like a gun we've got a little bit of beveling on here we'll do more of that soon all right and does it look okay i mean this is a bigger piece so it's not going to be the exact same spacing but that's i think that's fine now we can make this look better while we model by hitting N and coming over to, let's close some of these up, shading and choosing ambient occlusion. That's going to provide some shadow effects here. I'll turn it on and off and have a look at this. Off and on. And that can help you with your modeling. We won't worry about this other stuff right now. Okay, cool. Let's hit N to close that and save. Let's go back to three and see where we're at. All right. So we haven't done anything earth shattering, but we just we've scaled a little bit and we've uh, adjusted the scale and we've done a little bit of beveling. And I think it looks pretty cool. All right. We're going to do these things now. Now, this is a new technique. Um, let's select this object here because these things are based off this object, not this one or this one. Let's go into edit mode for this object and wireframe so we can see through. All right, so what's going on? We've got our object here, and then these things are sticking out. They're really like rings going around it, all right? And the way we're going to build these is with extrusion. We're gonna do some extruding. Um, we haven't really done that yet, so it's time to do that. Um, but I right now, if I go to face selection, I am in face selection here. Let me turn. Let me get out of wireframe. I only have one polygon there, one there, one there. You know, um, I don't have the parts I need to make rings. You know, I don't see any rings there. We're gonna have to build the geometry to make those rings, and it's really not hard to do. Let's just look from the side view and in wireframe. And here's what we're gonna do. These parts stick up into the air. These parts seem to be under the mesh here. So we're going to build these parts and we're going to extrude those parts. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put my cursor over this object and I'm going to go Control R. See, Control R. Control R means add a loop, add, an, add a cut. Control R. Let's do that again. Control R. All right. That puts a pink line right there in the middle, but nothing happens yet if I move my mouse until I left click and then it changed colors. Now I can move it, I'm just moving my mouse, I'm not pressing any buttons. Let's hit escape and it locks it in. Let's do that again though. I'll do it over here, but it won't matter. It'll put it in the middle of the mesh and then it's up to you to move it. So I'll put my mouse right here, control R. See, it's right in the middle. All right, now, 
can't do anything. If I hit left mouse button, I can now move this. I want to move this to about there. Now you might say to yourself, well, why doesn't it stick up here? It's supposed to be longer. Well, that's because this loop is actually part of the mesh itself. It doesn't go up into space. We just cut the mesh, the model, but we're going to work on that. Um, well, let's, let's um, hit A to deselect. Let's do that again because I may have missed one mouse click to tell you about. Control R. All right. Now, by the way, that it put it in a different spot. When I didn't have this one, it put it right in the middle. Now that I have this one, if I click it, it's putting it off a little bit to the right. Well, let's just work with it for now. We'll see what happens next. Left click, pull with your mouse, and when you're done, click again. All right, and deselect. I've got these lines, or what's called edge loops. These are loops that go around. I've got them right in the positions that I want them. I want them uh, where these lines are. Let's do another one, but I'm gonna put my, if I put my mouse here, by the way, Control R, the loop goes inside this area. If I put my mouse here, the loop goes inside this area, but look where it's putting it, even farther down to the right. All right, doesn't matter. Left click and pull. It doesn't have to be perfect anyhow. No one's measuring this. Okay, deselect. Left click, it's even further down. Pull. Left click again to accept, deselect. Left click, pull. Left click and deselect. Left click, pull, deselect. Now, it's gonna put it in this area. Left click, pull it there, deselect. Left click, ah, I have to pull it this way because there's not much room where it puts it in. Left click, deselect, all right. Cool. Look what we've done. Let's look at this in solid view. All right. Now that might look pretty confusing to you, but we put in these areas here, 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 and here. Four of them equally. All right. See like this, 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 and this. What we're going to do is do an extrusion equally all around. It's going to make these cool tubes. I like to do this in face selection mode right down here. Okay, so I can see these dots. When you see the dot like that, you're in face selection. I want to select this polygon and this polygon, oh, I'll shift and click, and this one, and this one, and all the way around for all of them. But I don't want to spend my time doing that. Instead, what you can do oops, is just click on the line in between two of them that make up a nice row of them and shift and Alt and click that and that'll get the whole thing. If I just hold Shift, I can add to my selection. But I don't want to do that. I want the whole row. Shift, Alt and click there. Now if I go Shift, Alt and click there, nothing's happening. Click on the line. All of them. All four. Now you can move away. I'm not holding any keys down. I'm just holding the left mouse button and I can move around and I've got those selected. Now, in your version of Blender and which whatever theme, the colors may be different, but that's a selection. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I don't, well, I guess I do need to look at this vantage point. All right, let's do it. I'm going to extrude these. All right, I'm going to be pressing the E key and then I'm going to be scaling. Um, if I just press E, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to press E on my keyboard and left click to finalize that. So I'm going to go E, see something weird there, and click. It doesn't look like much has happened. Don't deselect right now. But these other dots are present here. Let's let me backtrack. Let's zoom in way close to this. All right. These are the selected areas. This is not selected, but watch this area. I'm going to go E and left click. See the dots put in there? It means that there are other polygons created right on top there. It's ready to move some polygons. So we're going to do an extrusion, all right? So I'm going to go E to extrude, and that's created more polygons. But if I do this, you see the way we have this effect? I've created new stuff. That's not what we want to do, though. Let's go back one more with that stuff selected and oh no I lost my selection I hit A on purpose 
Shift Alt and click, Shift Alt and click, Shift Alt and click, Shift Alt and click. E to extrude. Now, viewing it from the side, I want to scale these rings out so they reach this and they're going to come outwards in all directions except the Y. I don't want these rings to be any longer or shorter than they are where I placed those original edge loops. So I want to scale it upwards and outwards. Okay, remember X is coming out at us. So from the sides out, backwards and forwards and up and down, but not longer. So I'm going to scale, but not in the Y. So I'm going to go S for scale. And then to say not Y, I'm going to press the shift and Y button. That's all I have to do. All right, let's do that again. S, shift, Y. That means scale, but not Y. Now, notice the double arrow and the and the dotted line. I'm gonna pull, pull out, pull out, pull out till they go right to there. Done. Left click and you're done. Let's have a look at that. Look what it's done. All right, and that's what I wanted it to do. Let's deselect and go back into object mode and have a look at our work so far. That looks pretty cool, but there's more that we can do to make that look a bit better. These are very sharp angles right here, right there. It looks doesn't look quite real. We're just going to add something to make it look a little bit better. Okay, let's go back into edit mode on this stuff. And I'm going to switch to edge selection. Now this might seem a little weird, but once you've done it a bunch of times, you're going to do it all the time. All right, so what I want to do here, I'm not even looking at the diagram, is I want to select this edge that goes all the way around. I'm not selecting polygons like that. We already did that. I just want the edge, and let me show you why. If I press Shift, Alt, and click on the edge, I get the whole thing all the way around. Shift, Alt, and click on that one, and I get that. It adds to the selection. Let's do them all. Shift, Alt, and click on all these edges. Just like that. Let's go back to three and look. In fact, let's go into wireframe. I need to do these edges, but the same way we did this, I'm not just going to do the top and the bottom. I'm going to do this effect. So let's, let's try that. I've got them all selected there. Beveling, Control B. Control B and pull away from the center and look what's happening. I can pull way like that, that's messed up, or that, just like this. Match the diagram as best you can. Left click to finish, A to deselect, and go into object mode. And if you're in wireframe, go to solid. That looks better. It's not smooth, we're not going for that. We're going for the low poly boxy kind of look for now. Okay, save your work. That's good enough. All right, very good. We're gonna do something very similar for this part of the gun. Um, I wanna create this part that the bullet will come out of, and that's the scientific term for that. Um, I'm gonna be bringing in a another uh, eight-sided cylinder for this. But the problem is my 3D cursor is right here. And I want to build this object out here. Well, let me show you what I mean. If I go Shift A to add a new mesh cylinder, remembering I want it to be eight vertices, it shows up right here. I got to move it and position it. I want to show you a better way. Control Z, something you're going to do all the time. If you know that you want to build this part of the gun right off of this, select it, go into edit mode, and choose maybe this front face. So I switched to face selection and I selected it. And tell the, the, the software that I want to move the 3D cursor right to here. So when I bring in a cylinder, you're going to bring it in there because that's what the 3D cursor does, among other things. It tells Blender where should you bring in the next object. I don't want it to bring it in there. I want to bring it in near the front. So you select that piece, any piece that's reasonable. All right, this is directly in the front, so that's reasonable. And you go Shift S, and instead of cursor to center, you go cursor to what is selected. Well, I've selected that. Watch this. 
See the way the 3D cursor moved to there? If I go here and I go Shift S, cursor to select it, because maybe I want to draw a wing there, I bring my 3D cursor there, but I want it right at the front. Shift S, cursor to select it. I can now deselect and go back into object mode, and my 3D cursor will stay there. So if I now, I'm going to side view, go Shift A, mesh, cylinder, it brings it in a lot closer to where I need it. All right. Now for this, I want to orient it straight, so I'm going to rotate it around the X and go RX90, just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and start scaling, S to scale. Now it's not in the exact position I want it, it's right in the middle, because that's where the 3D cursor was. That's fine. I'm just going to move it up. And I'm going to move it out anyhow, because I don't know that that's the exact size that I want it. Now, I moved this stuff so that 22 and a half inches, so I had the square part up there. I'm not going to worry about that for this. I might want it to look a little different. It's supposed to be like a circular uh, barrel or muzzle or whatever you call that thing. So, on the side view, let's go into edit mode. And let's just, in wireframe, I guess, scale in the Y and pull. And I'm going to pull right out. Okay, now. Well, you know what? That end is where I want it on the left. This end. This end is too short. So how about we go into vertex mode. I find that the easiest when I'm grabbing multiple points. And I box select and I do that and I get the whole thing. And I'm going to pull that right out to the edge. Okay. Oh, we got these curves. Well, we're about to deal with that. We know how to do that. All right. So I've got that so far. I've got just the box. So you work on the little, on like global things first, or first comes first, whatever you work on. You don't have to worry about, well, what about all these things? Let's do this first. Okay. Um, I want to make these edges, but I also want to do what I did here. All right, so let's do that from scratch. Let's, let's actually just come out and have a look at this for a second. What we can do in edit mode, okay? Um, I'm just gonna switch to, it's just a flat piece there and there's that and there's no angles or anything. So we're gonna fix that, all right? And we're gonna do it on both sides actually. So I'm gonna, uh, do I need to move this? No, not really. All right, we're gonna look on, uh, we'll look in side view in just a moment. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to edge selection. So you see, I'm gonna go to control tab and I'm choosing, right? It's faster than this stuff. I'm going to shift alt and click that. Okay, so I want just that piece. I want the whole row, shift, alt, and click, all of that. And by default, it, it, uh, if it's at the end, it will select the face as well. That's fine. Shift, alt, and click that one. I wanna do both of them at the same time. Let's look in three and in wireframe. And we're in edit mode. We're going to bevel. The origin point is right here in the middle, all right? We haven't talked much about origin point. We'll see if we need to later, but we can see that circle with the axes. That's the origin. So my beveling will occur from that point. You'll see a dotted line from across. I'm going to put my mouse down here and I'm going to go control B. See the dotted line across and I'm going to pull. And I'm going to get this. Now, it's a little off the diagram. Too bad. That's good enough. Solid mode. Look at that. All right, we're not done, but that's what that's what we're getting. All right, um, yeah, let's look from the side. Let's go into edit mode and wireframe, and let's see what the deal is. Now, it's just that when I drew the diagram, I mean, look at the length of this line versus the length of this line. It's not a perfectly accurate diagram. These are exactly the same. The diagram is not, so I'm going to go with this. There's a little piece sticking out here. It's not just two lines. It's it's. Uh, let me go, uh, let me go back into solid view. It's essentially it's this piece coming out further like a cylinder. All right. So I've selected in face selection that whole face, and I am going to uh, go E to extrude. So I hit E and left mouse button. That's created new geometry there, which we don't see. I'm now gonna pull it and pull it out to there. 
Now it just so happens that this angle uh, on both of those led this piece to be pretty close to the size that we need. If, if, it, if this wasn't the right size, I could select this piece and shift alt and click that. So I get all the stuff that I need if, I'm not going to wireframe, if this wasn't big enough, I could scale this like that if I wanted to, if I needed it a bit bigger. All right, well, I actually can't just continue this forward. Uh, I can't just go um, take this piece and pull it forward into this one because it needs to be wider up here. So we're gonna have to deal with that. So we are gonna deal with, with that right now. What I'm gonna do is I am going with that face selected like that, and if I didn't want to do it in face selection, I could have just the edge selected, which gets the face anyhow. I'm going to hit, I'm going to actually pull it back a little bit. I'm going to hit E to extrude and S to scale and pull up. And you can see it getting bigger. E to extrude again and push it in. Okay, let's come out and look and see what that has done. That's done that. All right, now... I want to do something else to this though. I don't want to leave this with just that sharp edge. So I'm going to go back into edit mode and I'm going to use in edge selection. I'm going to shift alt and click the edge, which will get the whole thing. And I'm going to go control B and pull back a bit until I get something like this. I'm not going to go too far, just about this much. And I'm going to left click and deselect and come out. And that's what I got. All right. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that for the moment, for uh, for that stuff. Now we gotta deal with, let's uh, select this again, go back into edit mode and wireframe. Now we gotta deal with these. Well, they're pretty similar to this stuff, all right? Um, but I'm gonna show you a new technique um, uh, to do this. Um, in this past technique, we did control R, and we moved a piece to here and then to here, and then another one to there, 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 there. And then we selected it all and we extruded and scaled out. All right? <laughs> all right. I'm going to do something kind of similar. This really has a bunch of indentations to it because see this piece goes down from, from the outer line here instead of just sort of straight across and then out, straight across and then out. Okay? This one comes straight across and then down and then up to the normal level and then down. Okay? So um, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna put a line roughly in the middle of each of these indentations here, and then I'm gonna do something. The problem is when I go Control R, actually before I do that, there's one, two, three, actually how many spaces? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine indentations. I don't want to be placing a line in another line nine times two, 18 times. I'm going to do something else. Watch this. And I go Control R. That's going to put in one line. I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel up two. Scroll my mouse wheel three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can see the number at the bottom of the screen. On bottom left, it says number of cuts, nine. Click, left click to accept. Now, move my mouse a little bit to roughly the middle of this one. And then you'll see, ah, they're kind of off. That's the diagram issue. And we're not gonna worry about it, all right? We're just gonna pull them wherever we want. They're all selected still. Now, if I hit A and I deselect them and they're gone, you go, what the heck is going on? Just go back to three. Try to remember which lines are important, not this one, these ones. Shift, Alt, and click on it. You get the whole thing. Shift Alt and click, Shift Alt, Shift Alt and click, Shift Alt, Shift Alt, move over, Shift Alt, Shift Alt, and Shift Alt. All of it, okay, like that. I've got them all selected. Now, how is this going to help us? I need a rectangular area that's indented from the main you know, position. I'm gonna create those little rectangles using beveling. Now we just used beveling to make these angles, but I'm gonna show you another technique or another use for it. Watch this. With the origin in the middle still here, just wherever it's been, we haven't moved that. And these lines all selected, these edge loops selected, I'm gonna go Control B and pull. 
and see these spaces I'm creating? Pull until the space roughly equals the space of one of those areas, one of those rectangles. And it doesn't, they don't have to be laying right on the space. If I left click now and accept, these rectangles in blue with the green outer size, uh, outer border, are exactly the, the same distance apart from each other. Mathematically, Blender is right. My diagram is a little bit off. If I hold my middle mouse button and scroll around, they go all the way around. All right, because the edge, the green line went all the way around. I beveled and I made spaces all the way around. Now, this is the technique. Watch this. Once you've done that, hit E to extrude and left mouse click. And then scale, but inwards. Okay, let me do that again. Okay, I'm getting rid of the extrusion part. Let me just show you what happens if I try to scale scale inwards. I'm going to go S and I'm going to bring my mouse in towards the middle. S and bring my mouse. That's not the effect that we're going for. In order to make these stay in the correct, in their spots and just shrink, we need to do an extrusion. Why? Just practice and you'll see it. It's simple. But to explain why it stays in its place, it's a little bit difficult. I mean, it's going to make new geometry right there that can be scaled. So. E to extrude, left mouse click. Now I want to scale them inwards, but I don't want them longer or shorter. I just want them in now from the surface all the way around. So we're going to scale, but not in the Y, right? Not in the, the Y, not longer, not shorter. So you go S, Shift Y, scale, S, Shift Y, and now push your mouse up and watch this. Bring the lines down to about the lines that you see in the diagram. Looks like it just made it from the top and the bottom, but if you scroll around, well, let's get out of wireframe. Let's go into solid. Look what it's done. All right. A to deselect. Go back to object mode. And deselect the whole thing. That's what it's done. Looks a little rough though so far. So we have some cleaning up to do. And the cleaning up is gonna take a minute or two. All right, well, let's do it. Back into edit mode. We don't need to be in wireframe. We don't need the diagram for this. We're gonna do some beveling by hand. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select in edge selection down here all of the sharp edges not this one because this one has a bit of an angle coming in i'm going to shift alt and click that angle or that edge shift alt and click that one and that one shift alt and click this one and this one and if you get something wrong Control z shift alt and click all these lines you don't even have to be exactly on the line i'm, I'm just clicking there and blender is finding it and it seems to know what we want sometimes all these and I will get this one as well, okay? All these ones that are sort of like 90 degrees. Now, we got all that selected, okay? We're gonna do it all at the same time. We're gonna go Control B, and we're gonna pull back just a little bit, okay? It's gonna happen from the origin, so position it okay, like, you know, so I get my dotted line like this. So Control B, pull back, don't pull back too much. Like, that's getting crazy just a little bit and if I do that I see my the line where I pulled back to is not touching this line it's not overlapping now if I deselect and come out look what we've done cast a little bit of light it looks a little bit better it follows the theme of this we can also do something at the end here go into edit mode select this face I just switched over to face selection select that face and let's do a new tool called inset I'm going to press the I key and then move my mouse in watch this I and move my mouse in if I move my mouse out it goes like that move my mouse in and left click to accept I've just created a new ring I'm going to do that again I'm going to remove doubles just in case I have any problems it doesn't matter so I'm gonna select this face and I'm gonna go I and that's gonna create another little ring and 
then I'm gonna push it in, but I'm not just gonna do that. That's kind of weird. I'm gonna hit E to extrude and push it in as far as I want. No one's gonna be looking down there. I'm gonna deselect and come out. And that is that part of the gun. All right, takes a while, but nothing difficult. Make sure you save. Three, okay, we're gonna do this piece, so let's just get on it, okay? My 3D cursor is still set on this polygon, which is roughly where I want that, that thing to come in. So let's just go ahead and go Shift A, bring in a um, cylinder again, same parameters, but rotate X, RX 90, scale it down in object mode is fine. Scale it again till you start to be able to see it. As soon as you're ready, scale it a bit bigger. Go into edit mode and wireframe. Okay, whoa, it's like crazy. Let's scale this in the Y. And let's move it. That's about right. I could scale a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's pretty good there, right? Nice. All right, deselect. Let's let's look at the solid view. It's a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and select that face because we're gonna we're gonna do some more work now on this. Uh, I can be in wireframe. I'm gonna hit E to extrude and S to scale. I'm gonna pull my mouse in. I'm gonna look at that line there. This green line. It's roughly the correct um, size. So I'm gonna go E to extrude again, and I'm gonna pull out right to about there. And I've pretty much created my piece I've got with a little bit of an indent here okay but I think I do want um, some let's let's go back in sorry let's go back out here um, I want this kind of beveling on the end of it as well so I'm going to do a bit of work on this I'm going to in edge selection select that edge and go control B and pull until I get a bit of angling like that and it's up to you to decide how much. I'm gonna grab that edge. Now be careful, there's not that much space because if I go Control-B and I go like this, it's all gonna getting weird. Just pull back like something like that. Leave a little bit of space. Come out, have a look at it. All right, deselect, looks good. I don't know if this one has a hole or not. Let's put a hole in it, let's practice. Go into edit mode. I want to work on this front face, so I'm going to select it in face selection. I'm going to hit I to inset and pull in as much as I want. E to extrude and then pull back. And deselect and come out. I'm just going to do it like that. It's good enough. Make sure that this is making contact. Now, a lot of people would go back into their object, see this face here. They would hit X faces and delete it and then push this on because you don't need it. It's not gonna be seen, it's just extra work for the computer. So I could also go in here and I could go into edit mode, select this face, X faces, delete faces, and then move this back in and nobody's gonna know. And I'm just reducing my, my poly count. Okay, doing great. That's, that's uh, most of the hard stuff, uh, something else coming up, but let's do this little piece now. My 3D cursor is right here. I want to build this, and I know you probably can't even see what it is, so I'm going to build something and just say, hey, that's what it was. But it really is supposed to be up on the top of the gun here. So I'm going to select this piece and go into edit mode and select this face. Go Shift S, cursor to select it, and then come back out. My 3D cursor is now here, so when I bring in my next object, it's going to be a lot closer to where I need it, which is the top, rather than right at the front there. Anyways, I'm going to go Shift A, Mesh, and I'm going to bring in a cube. And it's going to be really, really big, but it is central, centrally located on the gun because of where I place my 3D cursor. I'm going to hit S to scale and just start bringing my mouse in until it shrinks down, shrinks down to maybe the width I might want it. Maybe I want it that wide. I'm going to move this up towards the front. Let's actually look on the side view. Oh, make sure your mouse is over the stage, not here. Three. Oh, it's getting close. Let's put it right in the middle right there and let's scale in the Y. I'm scaling in object mode right now. Let's lift this up a little bit. 
that's about the right height too close anyhow I can't see through so because I'm scaling an object mode if I hit N and I look up at my sh at my scale my scale looks really weird I'm gonna go control a uh, did I rotate this I don't think so just scale back to one okay, it's all set now you can't tell how wide this is I'm gonna actually I'm gonna add an edit mode I'm gonna scale this in the axle a little bit more a little bit wider um, you can't tell from the diagram uh, you can can't tell much from the diagram um, just you know that there it is you know and and that's about it it doesn't have to be the exact height or anything um, so I'm going to show you what I what I envision for this piece here all right so you got your little cube like that at the size you want it and I'm going to do this I'm going to hover my mouse over the cube and I'm going to go control R I'm going to get one loop and I'm going to roll my mouse button up once click left click to accept now right click to finalize that I don't like the position of these lines though I want them out to the left and to the right so in other words I want to scale them in the X equally in the X both ways I'm gonna go S X and pull and that's gonna pull them both out to about there I just move them a little bit A to deselect I want to select this face up here, but I mean, I'm in edge selection, so I'm going to switch to poly. That face, and shift and click that face. Both of those. And I want to bring them up. But wait, that didn't work. I'm going to need to do extrusion. I want to extrude just these faces. So if I hit E to extrude and left click, then if I pull them up, they will go like that. All right. And then I'm going to go. S, X, and pull in, and it's going to bend them in a little bit and make them a little bit narrower, and that's the effect that I'm going for. Let's go back to the diagram, and in wireframe, you'll see, whoa, it's really high now, so I'm just going to pull it down like that, and let's have a look at that, and be like, okay, so that's going to be like that. There's a whole bunch of it inside, but we're not done yet, so let's actually bring it up, and let's see if I select these three faces uh, all three of them and pull it up I can shorten the whole thing let's try that deselect and bring it back to the surface touch down and in wireframe oh it's getting closer it's still a little bit high there okay well that's not the end of the world let's let's do something else to it though okay let's go into edit mode and in edge selection I want to do some beveling but it's gonna be a bit weirder now I'm gonna shift alt and click there and I want to select all around the edge of the outside so I'm gonna shift alt and click there shift alt and click there can keep going keep going sometimes I'll get more in in one click so I got all of the outside and I'm gonna shift alt and click here and I get this piece of this and keep going Keep going do the exact same thing on that side okay I've got it all now I'm gonna try to bevel control B pull back and I'm not gonna go too crazy just a little bit like that left click to accept and let's have a look at that in object mode and I've got that effect I feel like it's too thick but maybe I'm wrong I kind of want to scale it in the Y I do feel like it's too tall now, so I want to bring it down. And let's have a look in the side view and bring it back up to here. Yeah, I could live with that. I'm not going to worry about the stuff that's inside or fa extra faces. There we go. There's my sights or whatever. Cool. All right. We're getting there. It takes a long time, but I, ho I hope you're following. I'm starting to speed up, I think. Um, we're almost we're almost done but we still have a few things to do but this is like the the grip for the thing but um, I drew it straight up and down because it's harder to model when it's on an angle and then make some changes if we need to so let's let's do it here um, my 3d cursor is up here and I want to build against this diagram I could just right click and put my 3d cursor right there couldn't I, I can put it wherever I want I could put it there um, and you know 
might be a little bit off center and everything like that, but uh, that, that's still helpful. Let's do that. Let's bring in a cube. Shift A, mesh, scroll right up to the top, cube. Let's go into wireframe and let's scale, just S to scale, just to start getting it somewhere near the correct dimension, that's not bad. Let's scale in, in the Z direction, you know, downwards and downwards, so scale Z, go like that, maybe move it down till it's equal, well it wasn't equal, but it's close. All right, we can now do some more work. Ah, my scale's all off, so let's go Control A, uh, did I rotate this, let's just go scale. All right, let's go into edit mode. There's edit mode, and Z for wireframe, I mean wireframe. And uh, I like to work in vertex. Let's box select the top and bring it up. And let's box select the bottom and bring it down. By the way, I'm getting all the points. Another thing we should look at, by the way, is let's hit one and look on the end. Look at how wide this thing is. So first of all, let's go scale in the X and think of this as the handle, you know, how thick do you want your handle? And let's also bring it to here. Let's also sort of center it. Let's deselect, come back out and look at this. Now, I should mention something about the origin now. Look at this thing floating around in space and forget the 3D cursor, all right? In fact, select your object and go Shift S cursor to selected. Oh, it's going to go to my uh, my origin. My origin is way off this. It's because I moved this in in uh, edit mode. Just once in a while, select your object and go Set Origin, Origin of Geometry, and it will put the origin uh, right back in the middle of the actual piece of geometry. If I now have that selected, and I go Shift S cursor to selected. It'll put the 3D cursor there. Not critical to do that or anything, but anyways, um, here's where I'm at. Okay, okay, so I've got that. Now that's not all that I want to do. I'm going to box select all these points, and I'm going to pull right to the very bottom. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, right to the very bottom. Now I want to make this indent part, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go Control R, and I'm going to left click, and I'm going to pull and put an edge there. And deselect. Control R and I'm going to left click and pull and put an edge right there. So that's all good but to make this indent part here I need another line. Control R and pull this way this time. All right now I'm going to need that. Am I doing that yet? No I'm not doing that yet. Sorry I take it back. I take it all back. Instead, what we're going to do is I'm going to create the indent because that's all just a solid piece there. Um, all right, let's go into um, solid mode. I want to shift alt and click that group of polygons. So uh, it was right to put in those edges there and there. I am now going to shrink this in just like when we did this. I've selected that area, so I'm going to go E to extrude, and I'm going to scale it in, but I don't want it to move taller or shorter. So I'm going to go Scale S, but Shift Z this time, and pull in until it roughly matches the diagram like that. Just like that. Now let's have a look at that. Okay, in solid mode. Now the one thing is that you may notice is that when you scale like that, this side here, maybe more than this. And I don't really like that. See, although it looks okay on the handgun, um, I might want to fix that. Uh, let's, uh, sorry, let's select all this again. And what I tend to do is just from a vantage point that I like, I just want to scale SX only and pull it in so that the distance here is similar to the distance there. I could do more if I wanted. I just, it, well, does that look good? Do I want more? Scale in the X. Maybe I will go a bit more. Let's have a look at that. It's a bit more balanced. Um, I don't know. 
personal thing, I guess. All right, well, anyways, let's go into edit mode and in wireframe, let's now add that edge there. And weird things will happen. It'll start to bend like this. That's okay. That's fine. I'm almost done. Um, I need to add another edge. Control R, and I'm gonna put it right there. All right, I just brought that edge and I put it right there. I'm gonna do the same for the bottom one, so you'll see that again. Control R, I'm gonna put it right there. Okay, and now I want to make this angle. It's going to be easy. All I have to do is in vertex mode, I'm going to box select because remember, I need both points. Okay, I don't want to just select one point, not the other. I'm going to box select there, and I'm going to box select these ones, and I'm going to move these up and these down. That's the same as scaling in the Z. I'm going to go SZ, pull out, that'll move them equally like that. And that is it for that. Let's go back to solid view and you go, wait, what the heck just happened? Well, all I did, let's go into edit mode, is I put in the edges and the, the vertices. In order to get that cut, I'm gonna actually get rid of these faces. I'm gonna get rid of this one, shift and click this one, shift and click this one, watch this. There's where I want my indent, X faces. Okay, well that's kind of better, but now it's, there's a big hole. Well, let's just rebuild this. Go to vertex mode, right down there, vertex. And a, polygons have um, more than two vertices, these dots. One is a vertex, two is a vertice. Join together, more than two join together. So three is a polygon. If I do that and hit F, it will make a face and that's a polygon. But I don't want, if I can help it, three-sided polygons or three vertices. If I select a fourth vertex and then go F, F there, I make a quad, which is highly desirable. So that's a polygon, and I'm gonna try to make four-sided polygons wherever possible. So if I select this vertex and then this one, even though they're used in this, polygon that's okay they can be shared in fact they're supposed to be in, in order for them to be joined together I mean this vertex is shared between this polygon and this one so if I choose those two and then these two and in any order as long as I'm holding shift F I can make a face so let's do that again watch this I can I want these four and be careful don't choose that one down there that one shift to click that one that one that I did them weird order F to make a face doesn't matter there I now if I go into object mode have my indentation all right and that's what I want now let's see if we can before we go on add some beveling to this this may be difficult to do in edge selection I want to bevel the edges the corners well I can do that bottom part but I'm gonna shift alt and click on that edge and you know what it goes all the way down and that's a good thing you'll see what I mean this one shift alt and clicks goes all the way down that's gonna be great unfortunately this one if I shift and click there it doesn't go all the way down so I'm gonna go shift alt and click there shift alt and click there and I'm gonna keep it going down to the corner piece like that all right, because this one goes along the corner. I, mean, I can do it in any direction. I can go upwards if I want. Just like that. All right. Now, cross your fingers. Control B, pull a little. Don't go too crazy. Try that. I'm not gonna deselect. I'm gonna come back into object mode and look. And I've created some corners that's are similar to this different size but that's okay that's good so far let's do a bit more let's go back into edit mode let's deselect this edge here shift alt and click I get the whole thing let's just go ahead and bevel that control B pull back and do this now let's have a look at what that looks like that just adds to it let's do this sharp edge here and the bottom 
shift alt and click and I got the whole that row let's do this one oh, well notice it I didn't get the whole thing it stopped there sometimes it'll do that and you have to go shift alt and click the rest of it control B and pull away and they'll both do it at the same time just do that and that's the effect that I want to have it's just debatable if I do anything about this sharp edge and that sharp edge we can try and have a look but if I just click shift alt and click right across there and control B pull up a ways do that it may not exactly match the diagram hmm yeah I think I probably would leave it like that okay let's have a look at the diagram we're not that far off I don't know maybe I won't do that last one it'll match the diagram a bit better we do have something to do back here though don't we all right so we'll, let's do that part I think I will just build cubes and size them to fit like that I'll show you what I mean let's go into solid view and I am going to in face selection doesn't have to be I'm going to select that face right there and I'm going to go shift S cursor to selected shift S cursor to selected bring the 3d cursor right there because I'm going to bring in an object and I want it to be right at the back there back into object mode I'm going to go shift a mesh cube and brings in a cube s and pull my mouse in to scale it way down now let's go into side view again and let's have a look okay let's scale a bit more let's bring it up and see if it kind of matches the first one okay not quite let's bring it out let's scale this in the x as well no not in the x let's scale this in the y as well and it's like okay so it'll be sort of like that but how wide is this thing? I want to do this, scale in the X. I like that effect. You can't tell that from the side view that it goes this far across, but I want to do it that way, all right? So, so far so good. Let's go Control A, rotation and scale. Could we have affected it a bit? Um, I am just going to Shift D and I'm gonna copy this down to there and then shift D and pull it down shift D and pull it down shift D and pull it down and then we'll do one more shift oops, shift D and pull it down and deselect I now have all of those placed but they're all individual objects and they just look like squares Let's take these, shift and click all of them, and go Control J, Control J. That joins them into a group. The origin point, though, is on the last one. Let's go Set Origin to Geometry. That'll put it right in the middle of this whole group of objects. But there's more that we want to do with this, right? Let's go into Edit Mode, and you can see they're all selected like that. We're going to bevel these and kind of make an effect like this. But before we do that, let's just make sure and scale. Ah, it's set to one. Okay, it's it's ready because what I'm about to do. All right, so I'm going to bevel these, and typically I've done that in edge selection. I've gone Shift Alt and clicked. But an easier way is to select that face, and that will get the whole edge around because I want to bevel this top edge. Just do what I'm doing and you'll see what I mean. Shift Alt and click that one and that one and that one and that one and that one. All at the same time. Control B, pull away about that much. Deselect and come out. And that's the effect we've got. That's what I wanted to do. All right? And that's it. Now, because we're going to be angling this, I need to join these. I'm gonna go shift, or I'm gonna click on that, and shift click on the handle, and control J. Join them together so it's all one piece. All right? All right, excellent. Let's have another look at the thickness of this. Well, let's leave it like that for now. All righty. I'm gonna move this with that, with the Y, and then move it up with the Z, and I'm gonna start to rotate this I want to rotate it around the x-axis like this, like R, X, 
and I'm not putting a number, just like that, R and X. Okay, so let's look on the side, and let's look in wireframe, and let's see if we can get this to go R, X, and rotate, and then move. Okay, and all right, great. Let's try going up a little bit, like that. All right. Yeah, let's try bringing it down a little bit. So here's the thing. If we look at this, ah, there's a gap there. It didn't quite fit. In fact, is it the right width? Yeah, the width is all right. Okay, I wish this was longer. The way I'm going to solve this is I'm going to go into edit mode. And I am going to select the top, which is really this polygon. And there's another one underneath there. In fact, let's do it this way. Let's uh, let's move it down again. Let's select that polygon and that polygon. I've selected everything in the, from the top. Now, if I just pull it up, it's in a different orientation. Watch this. See, it's like that. And if I just pull it up, it changes it. But if I switch over to normal, I can move this along the correct axis and that's what I want to do. So I'm going to pull that up a good ways. Um, I haven't been de deleting all the faces. And now if I move this, I can just adjust this like that and say, okay, that's that's pretty darn good. Okay. You know, it doesn't fully match the diagram down there, but that's okay. That's diagrams for reference. Mm, yeah, okay. Awesome. How about that so far? Okay, almost done. Let's do one more thing. Okay, let's switch back to global. That's the default. And we're going to build that uh, trigger. Uh, I want the trigger coming out of the middle of this. And so I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to select that polygon. And I'm going to go shift S cursor to select it. And deselect and come back to object mode. So when I bring in my next object to make this, it's going to come in close. Shift A, let's bring in a cube and S to scale way down like that. Okay, I'll go scale this in the X, and I'm going to scale this in the Z, and then we'll look at the diagram. All right, doesn't look quite right. Let's scale this in the Y as well. Let's make it bigger, cover the area that the trigger would be in. But actually, hang on, let's make sure it's under there, right? I don't want the trigger sticking out there. I want it you know, in that area, all right? Z for wireframe, and let's go into edit mode. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Okay, let's just pull some actual points around. Let's go into vertex selection. And remember that it's a thickness, so I've got to be in wireframe. And I'm going to, let's try to say B to box select and move this in like that. I'm just moving along that axis. That gets us somewhere. What if I box select both of those and bring them up? to about there. Okay, wait a second, that screws that up. Well, just box select that point again and just bring it out. That's pretty much it, isn't it? As long as these points are, you know, above the, you know, in the body of the thing, that's, that's kind of it, right? So we could do one more thing to this, but let's check, ah, scale is all weird. Let's go control A, uh, rotation and scale. Let's do one more thing with this. Let's go into edit mode and let's go in edge selection, which I could have got down there. Shift Alt and click there. Uh, I want to get the, this edge all the way around like that. I want to get this edge and this edge. And let's bevel. Control B, pull back, do something like that. Maybe a little bit less. Click, deselect. And that's my trigger. All right. That's my trigger. Is it too wide? No, I don't think so. Let me see if it, you know, can it come out at all? You can move it out a little bit if you wanted to. Now, that, I'm just holding my middle mouse button, that is essentially the modeling of the gun. All right, you can put more detail if you wanted. Let's put some very primitive colors on this so you know it would be more enjoyable to look at 
So what we'll do is we'll come over to the side panel here where you see this. This is the materials tab. Okay, it looks like a, well, there's a globe. It looks like a, I don't know, circle with something in it. Let's click that and click new. Um, I'm using cycles render, but basically you're just looking for color. All right, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna go down for an orange, uh, some bright, bright orange like that. I want to view this color in the viewport though. All right, so I'm gonna come down to where it says settings and I'm gonna click viewport color. I'm gonna click on that and with the eyedropper, I'm gonna select that. Now, only the trigger turned orange because I happen to have that selected. So you can see there I created this material. I wanna select this piece and then click here and choose that color and this piece and choose that color. And I'm gonna, for the moment, select this piece and choose that color. I'll be making a change. And this piece, and uh, we won't do it that way, okay? Now, I wanna make another material. So I'm gonna click New, and then click that, and I'm gonna pull down in the black area. And so that it's viewable in the viewport, I'm gonna click Viewport, and click like there and I want actually that to be black but not fully I do want this to be black so I'm gonna select that part and I'm gonna come up here and out of the area there I'm gonna click that Oh, not that piece this piece choose black and this piece uh, I'll try black now I think I'll go with orange like that. now let's do some other uh, work here I want this little indent part to be orange, but it's one object, so I'm gonna go into that in edit mode, and I'm gonna select face, and the way we do this is we select the polygons, once a color is assigned, let's say those, and then I'm gonna click this plus to put a little slot here, and then select the color and go assign, and that can make different things, different colors. So I'm gonna come back into here and all the polygons, I'm gonna shift alt and click all this, shift alt and click all this, and shift and click all the various polygons. No, that's not what I want. I don't want anything from below. All the ones that I want to be orange, I'm gonna select and I'm holding shift. And if I miss one, I can come back. Let's just do that. Click on the color and go assign. Let's have a look at that starting to come together oh I like the black there did I get all of that I did okay well there's more that we want to do though all right let's click this piece and let's actually make this black okay oh it's not taking it so go into edit mode hit a to select it all and there it's black okay well, that's a little dark I wouldn't mind orange rings so here's an easy way to select them come in and the orange wings are very symmetrical. They're sort of got an, I'm shift alt and clicking there. There's polys on the sides. So if I shift alt and click in all of the middles, and then if I go control plus, it expands my selection out by one. Control minus brings it back. Control plus by one, but I also wanna get these sides. Control plus, and it does it for all of them. If I then choose the orange and hit assign, and come out that and the more I look at it the more I'm starting to think that should be black so there's that and there's the gun all right it's very boxy and very simple but it took a long time to do and a lot of um, you know techniques now if you wanted to you could just find a position that you liked and click the camera and you could, you know, maybe center it a bit better. You could do an open GL render just like that. I do that all the time. Or, you know. Or what I like to do, uh, sometimes look right on in the side. Hit N. Let's go ahead and um, turn off that background image. And go Shift A, Mesh, Plane. Rotate Y90. What happened there? Rotate Y90. 
S10. But let's look on the side and bring it back because it's right in the middle. Something like that, three. And have like a plane in the background and then do that. You could do that. If you move like this, it's, it's not going to look right. Or you could do something like that. But uh, I like these for that s side view. Or you could, um, you could change the material. You could make a new material here and make it, you know, I don't know, purple or something. And in the viewport color, select that. <laughs> if that's what you were going for. But anyhow, um, I hope that helps somebody who is uh, just sort of beginning with Blender, looking at various uh, sort of simple modeling techniques. All right, so enjoy.